Welcome to a Saturday Night Live stream. We're going to be keeping this relatively short tonight. Uh, this is just something I'm messing around with in terms of a, a topic. But if you've ever wondered, you know, is it worth getting an iPad just for the Logic Remote app? Well, this will be a, a look at that and a look at that process because what we're going to be doing is taking this and um, exploring how much I can actually do, <clears throat> excuse me, without actually using my mouse and keyboard. Um, and I might use my MIDI keyboard, but um, that would be the only thing I would use. I wouldn't, I'm not going to use anything else um, on this entire thing uh, throughout the entire process. So I've got that loaded on the screen right now, and it's sitting here in front of me. And so our goal is to see just how much we can do with this. And some of it I'll be figuring as I go. I use this app to a certain extent, but I don't use it all the time. Um, that's just, you know, part of this is me thinking about whether I should use this uh, more in my process or not. So I'm actually curious about it as well. Uh, first things first, I have done a little bit of messing around with it just before this stream, um, but I think just enough to be super dangerous and to figure out a couple of the obvious things. Um, and so I'm going to start by opening up the library here because I want to actually change this channel that's selected, uh, this instrument one to uh, some sort of drum kit. I'm going to start with the drums, probably electronic drum kit, and we'll do the 808 flex. I'm going to close that and it, okay, updated. Now you can't see everything um, because I have the, the actual iPad screen front and center here, but um, if any of you are like, whoa, I need to see that, just let me know and I can move that out of the way on the stream. Mostly though, I want to do stuff here on the actual iPad though. So along that, that fader on the right, um, or actually before I do that, I want to actually click on the arrow on the top left and switch this over to the step sequencer. Um, so this is where I'll start actually making a little bit of a beat here. And we have transport controls, uh, which are nice. And I think, um, let's see if I can undo that for a minute. We're gonna undo all of that. Uh, because it, once I have my transport just a little bit to the left there, we're gonna put the transport back all the way to the starting point before I start programming. Because if I don't do that, then it just places it where the, the playhead is. And I wanna make sure I pu push that uh, inside the loop point. Okay, cool. Um, just do a couple snares. And we'll do a hi-hat pattern. And with some of these, with a closed hat, I'm gonna open that up and do note repeat because I like the sound of the, the variation that that gives. And let's just listen to this for a second, make sure we have sound on the stream too. Okay, cool. Just a, a simple pattern there. And then I'm gonna go back to the mixer for a moment. And we can go to the different views of there. You can see I've got my effects, pedal board, channel EQ on that. Um, let's right off the bat, just add another instrument. And we do that in the top right with the gear. That's one thing I wish I could just click in the empty space here to add another track, but <clears throat> we don't have that. And actually, because I haven't even saved this project. Let's save the project. I'm gonna to have to use my, I'm just gonna hit the return on my keyboard. I just wanna give it a, I don't wanna give it any specific name or anything. Try not to use my typing keyboard or mouse, but I had to just to give it a name. 
Okay, so new track, software instrument, and then go back to the I.O. portion of this. We can choose the instrument. Uh, we'll do the retro synth stereo. Okay. And then I can switch over if I want to do smart controls and keyboard. And let's actually scroll down here. About like that. Uh, maybe even turn on the arpeggiator. And I don't know. Let's see if we have arpeggiator control someplace on here. I don't know if I do or if I do I don't know where it is I wonder if I can get there by no okay so I don't know about actually changing the arpeggiator settings directly from the iPad or not I know if we go back to the mixer the MIDI effects, I can change it here. So I'll do it there. Because once that loads, I can do it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I just want like a eighth note thing instead of a sixteenth note. That's really all perhaps I wanted. Going back and forth between stuff is a little bit of a pain. And I have to rescore. I don't even know if I want an arpeggiator at all. Something. Okay, so let's push play. That might work. We'll just do a simple pattern. Let's let it go around one. Well, we'll stop it for a second. Go back to the beginning. So there's a just the ever so slightest delay um, when doing that version of recording. So I'm going to undo that one time and re-record it, see if I can get a little bit better. If I can't, then I'm going to switch over to the big keyboard, but we'll see if I can't do it. Okay, one more time. Let's see if I... Yeah, I'm not hitting that first note in the right place. Or it's just like too soon. So one thing you can't do um, is edit um, on the iPad. I mean, obviously you could use your mouse and go up and do that. I don't know if we have any quantization key commands. Let me look real quick because that might actually be of use. Do, 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 do. Because if I can do that, then that would actually mean I could do some basic editing. <clears throat> so we have quantize. Okay, so I did quantize it.
So that's pretty horrible. Let's redo it one more time. What are we doing here? Quantize. Let's do quarter notes. I don't know if this is doing the same thing or not. Let's go back one more time and try that. So this is super interesting. I mean, it's like, it's kind of fun to, to see if we can do what we want to do without leaving this. But man, that's not the same thing. Okay, cool. That's for something else. And then we have our tools. Okay, cool. So I think what I'll do is undo that one more time and see if I can't just get one better performance before I switch it over. Oh, I'm in the room. Let's undo that. Every time I go back to the keyboard, it puts it back up, um, which is super annoying. Um, let's, there we go. That's super annoying. It doesn't remember where I had that squirrel to. You have to be real intentional about pushing those keys to. Okay, we'll try that. Okay, I think that'll be fine for the moment. I was looking back, I couldn't find. Once again, I need to maybe organize some of these key commands uh, to different things, um, just so that I can keep track of where everything is. Let's make a new track though. Um, we'll do that over here so I can see it. New track and some sort of instrument again, this time maybe uh, keys. So we'll do keyboards um, or maybe electric piano. Let's do that. And this time we'll use the chord strips. be the really the only thing to really use there chord strips so I was doing Let's see what we got. Let's push play. This sounds horrible. So, struggling a little bit with not being able to edit MIDI or change things around. Um, I think that that would be the hardest part for working on the iPad all by itself. So, in conjunction with the mouse and keyboard, doing a lot of the editing and things on the actual screen, um, as opposed to, you know, just always inputting everything here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is replay that part. Let's see if I can actually get to do this. Um, so we're gonna go here. And I don't know with key commands, if there's a delete. 
cut. There's got to be, right? So what I'm thinking is, because I'm still trying not to touch anything, if I actually go through and just can just hit delete on that, delete, take, or comp, I mean, that's not exactly the right thing. Nope. Um, mm -hmm. I might just, I mean, literally delete. There we go. And I'm sitting in front of the wrong part of the keyboard. So what I want to do is um, come over here to that track MIDI effects. And I just want to add a MIDI effects transposer. We'll open up that one and we're just going to go down two octaves. No, just one octave, I think. Okay, so we're going to do it this way. Put that on. We don't see the keys I'm playing in both places, but let's push record. Okay, so let's push stop. Listen to that. So I'm going to record this part, but I actually want to add just a little bit of um, compression on here. And I just clicked on the little gain reduction meter on the iPad screen and it brought this up, which is kind of nice. Let's do the vintage FET. I should see the meter on the iPad screen there. It's there. Okay, cool. So
Okay, so I just kept on working there. It's like adding a new track, picking a preset turned out to be a little bit of a trick until I realized it was just under settings. And then it's like you go by the categories. <laughs> So let's do uh, under Sculpture, that's the delay sound of Sculpture. Oh, there's gonna be tons in here. I really don't, I wish it was some graphical thing instead of this endless amount of sliders, but we can make it work. find the delay. I mean, geez, I might have passed it already. I don't have no idea. This is where it gets a little bit like, ooh. So if I just like change stuff as I go. Yeah, I'm not trying to click there. And you learn just how many settings there are in these instruments when you look at it this way. It's in incredibly insane. And you have to click in the right place. Delay. Input balance. Left, right, groove, delay, feedback. That's all I wanted, just to adjust that a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I don't know where off the top of my head with the key commands if we can do the looping thing. So, and I, it's like you can't search through them. There's page after page. Ooh, so what I want to do is come here and just uh, try not to use that. Let's see. Hmm, main window tracks and various editors. Quantize, ooh, there's more quantizing options. Okay, I've just gotta type on my keyboard for this. Ooh. Uh, oh, I guess I can do it with here without touching. I forgot, I can use my screen. Uh, um, global commands, loop. Um, wow, why is that? Convert loops to regions. Not there, I guess. Let's go back out. Main window tracks. That should be where it is, but. Jeez, this is like every single key command ever. Okay, I'm not gonna spend any more time. I was thinking about looping this out further. Um, convert, what a pain in the butt. 
Okay, forget it for now. I'll figure that out later. So you can add any of these that you want. Um, and because, I mean, we can adjust our loop point of our cycle region. So I could have done that too. I just can't figure out this case. Um, how to do... Main window tracks. Just couldn't figure out this one thing. But you can add just about any of these that you want. It can make it really powerful <laughs> as long as you don't have too many things happening all at once. Oh my gosh, there's too many. There's like years worth of stuff in there. So it's got to be part of this one. not sample loop. Loop. There it is. So if I'm in the mixer, I think, and I select that, it selects the region above. Okay, now I was doing what I wanted to do. Um, what a pain in the butt. But it's actually cool that I can do it. I just had to like, and I probably could do this a different way too, now that I'm thinking about it. So if I'm in the key commands, I should be able to select the different tracks just by going on these arrows right here. I forgot about that. Okay, so then I go click here. Let's double this so it's eight bars. Ooh, that took way too long. <laughs> Anyone watching is like, oh my gosh, what a pain. And we'll undo that because, of course, I'm on the wrong track. So let's go down one more. There we go.
I actually was just goofing around, but I kind of like that last one. So we're going to go back in our key commands to the beginning here and do captures recording. <laughs> is recording. all we're gonna do today i think apart from a few things that would be way easier to do with a keyboard and mouse i think apart from those things you can do almost everything 
um, with the iPad control app. And then like in this case, just my MIDI keyboard attached to Logic. So I didn't touch the computer at any other time. Anyway, hope this was useful. Hope some of you are interested. Um, I know it's, um, you know, Saturday night here in the States. And, um, you know, you're, if you're watching YouTube, then that says some stuff about how serious you are about, you know, audio production. So more power to you. But um, hope this was helpful. Talk to you all later. We're ending the stream.